Hey y'all, welcome to the Wednesday evening edition to the Morning Watch. It is Wednesday, February, uh, not February, April the 6th, 2022. Give some time for folks to come on and we will get started. So tonight we are in the third chapter of the book of Proverbs. We are marching our way through this incredible book of wisdom that has such rich teachings, such rich wisdom for us as, um, as believers to draw strength from, encouragement from, direction from. And um, it's just an incredible, it's an incredible chapter, incredible book. Hi, Rosemary. Good evening to you. Good to see you tonight. Hi, Welma. Good to see you, too. All right. I hope your week is going well so far. It's hump day, right? So we're on the downhill slide after today. So if anybody that comes in now or later, if you're watching this sometime later on, put your prayer requests into the chat so that we can pray with you about those things. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we will jump in and get started. This is an amazing chapter and I want us to do it justice. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord, and we just want to pray that you would that you would be with us tonight as we study your word together, that we would be awake and alert. And uh, no matter how busy our day's been or how tired we might be, Lord, we're we're wrapping up our day in your word like we normally start our day in your word now we're finishing up our day here and lord i just pray that as we read your words read your words tonight lord in your scripture that you would wake up our minds that you would let us see in your scripture the things that you would have us to see lord let us let us be partakers of your wisdom we need it we need your wisdom in our lives we can't make it without it. So Lord, we're just asking you for that tonight. And we know that you are faithful and that you listen to us and that you want us to be recipients of your wisdom. So Lord, we just, we're gonna dive in to your word and we just pray that you would do it, do in our hearts what you would have us to do with your word tonight. We love you and we ask all this in the name of Jesus, amen. All right, who all's here? There's Donna. Good to see you, Donna. And Wilma and Rosemary. All right. So I'm not sure how you do this when you do the morning watch, whether you read along in your copy of God's Word. I hope that you do. Because um, I think there's, there's something that happens when we physically touch the Word of God. Um, and I, I, I read my Bible on my phone sometimes, too. And I think that's a good thing. It gives us more access to the Word of God. But if you're like me, I like holding the book. I like turning those thin pages and just really benefiting from that. So let's read. Remember, Solomon, King Solomon is writing. King Solomon is writing these words. And this entire chapter is about what rewards do we get as believers, as God's children, from wisdom. What are the benefits? Number one, where does it come from? It doesn't come from us. It comes from the Lord. And through the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us as believers, we are given wisdom when we seek after it. You don't just fall into it. God reveals himself and makes us wise through his word. God's word is the final authority in the lives of believers okay so let's read it says my son it says do not forget my teaching so solomon's writing to his son and we kind of fall into that category too he says but let your heart keep my commandments he says my these are solomon's commandments but he has them in his heart and so they belong to him just like us. These are our commandments. These are our teachings. All right. He says, 
for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. That's a beautiful promise in Scripture that God is saying here that life comes to us through pursuing the wisdom of God. And he says, look at this. It's, it's, it's what's really cool to, to consider. Look at verse 3. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. What does that mean? It means get God's word into you, inside of you. Keep God's word as close to you as possible. He says, tie them around your neck. He said, write them on the tablets of your heart. That's why I'm a firm believer that memorizing scripture is not just something that children need to do. I'm a big proponent of adults memorizing scripture. What does that do? Number one, it helps your, helps your mind. Number one. Number two, it helps your soul. That's what Solomon is writing about here. Writing them on the tablets of your heart. Internalizing scripture. He says, so that you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. In good repute, a good reputation. Do we want to have a, because we, we're so concerned so, so many times with how other people perceive us and look at us. Here he's saying, if you want to have a good reputation in the eyes of man, and ultimately, and most importantly, the Lord, this is how you do it. You become wise through keeping his commandments knowing his word okay and look at this and it says now verse five and six are probably two of the most quoted verses in all of scripture you can probably quote them okay here it is trust in the lord with all your heart and he says and do not lean on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will Make your paths straight. In old King James, it says, "He will direct. He will direct thy path." What does that mean? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't rely on your own interpretation, your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. How often is this? This speaks to our priorities in our life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Because it's really easy to say trust in the Lord. But when the rubber meets the road and we're going through a situation or we're going through a joyous, joyous time, where do we go first? Do we go to our own understanding or do we trust in the Lord? And it says if we acknowledge him in all things, he will direct our paths. He will show us how to go. That's what God's word does for us. And he says, um, seven, do not be wise in your own eyes. That speaks to our own understanding again. Don't be wise in our own perspective. He says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. We know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So all these things are connected. He says, it will be, oh, this is so good. Look at verse eight. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. What's he talking about? Seeking after the Lord. Knowing him, seeking after wisdom, getting in the word of God. It's a it's a it's a healing to your body and it's refreshment to your bones. Verse 9. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from your first of all your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Okay, what does that mean? Bring God the first fruits of the harvest. Okay, not bringing God the leftovers of ourselves, of our time, of our resources, all of those things. And God will bless you. He will take care of you. He will make sure that you have what you need. Okay, not what you want necessarily, but what you need. And it says here, my son, this is, this is a big thing. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. If you belong to him and you've given your heart and your life to the Lord and you stray away, which we do, you will be disciplined. You will be corrected. That's in the same way that we, those of us who, all of us were children, right? 
And those of us who have children understand that discipline is administered out of love. Okay, I know that there are people out there that did not experience that kind of loving discipline. But here's what we know. God will move you if you love him, if you belong to him and have given your heart and life to him. God will move you back into line through his corrective hand. Okay, how does he do that? There are a lot of different ways, but one of the primary ways that he does that is that he challenges you when you're studying God's word and you see the, the scripture's like a mirror. Okay, we hold ourselves up to that and we see how we fall short. And he also uses situations and a lot of other things to correct us too. And he says, how blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. How blessed is that person. He says, for her profit, her being wisdom, is better than the profit of silver and her gain better than fine gold. What Solomon is writing here, there's no, and Solomon knew because he was a very wealthy man, but understanding that there's no greater treasure in life than wisdom. Okay. And he says, and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. There's peace in wisdom. There's peace in that. Okay? It says, she, being wisdom, is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who hold her fast. Grapping on to her. Grapping on to wisdom. And holding on to her. Okay? And it says here, the Lord, by, this is this is crazy. Because it talks about how what wisdom does. Okay, look what it says in verse 19. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up and the skies dripped with dew. He says, my son, let them not vanish from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. It says, so that they will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck. Okay? And it says, then you will walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble. Your foot won't stumble if it's rooted in seeking after the wisdom of the Lord. Okay, you're going to be on firm ground. It's like, you remember the parable from scripture that talks about, it's like the man who built his house upon the rock. A firm foundation will not buckle even when the storms of life come its way. All of this begins with being a person who seeks after and craves and covets the wisdom of God that comes through a fear of him and a reverence of him and a desire to know him more. Okay, And we do that primarily through scripture in a lot of ways. He says, then you will walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble. Look at this. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. That's a promise. Because when you seek after the Lord, it tells us here, when you seek after his wisdom, you have peace. When you have peace, then you will sleep well. You know, a lot of people don't sleep well. For a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's a medical condition. Sometimes it's other things. But when we seek after, there, there, there's joy and rest and peace in the wisdom that comes from knowing Christ. What kind of peace is it? The Bible says it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that the world simply does not understand. Okay? And he says here, Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor of the onslaught of the wicked when it comes. Look at verse 26. For the Lord will be your confidence. And will keep your foot from being caught. Where do you put your confidence? What is it in this world that you look at and say, that's where my confidence is put? There's only one place where we can truly and ultimately put our confidence and know that it will be well founded, and that is in the person of Christ. Okay? And it says, verse 27 Do not withhold good from those whom, from who, to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it, okay? Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Doing right by people is what he's saying here, okay? It says, don't, if you can do good to somebody, do it. 
If you have it with you, don't say come back and I'll give it to you tomorrow. Give it to them now. Okay? And it says when I have, when, so look at verse 29. Do not devise harm against your neighbor while he lives securely beside you. Do not contend with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious are an abomination to the Lord, but he is intimate with the upright. He is intimate with the upright. Those who align their lives with him, those who seek after him, those who trust in the Lord with all your heart, it's those people It's those people that have an intimate relationship with him. Okay? And how do you know him? You know him by reading his word, by spending time with him in prayer, by worshiping him together collectively in the local church. Okay? The COVID pandemic has hurt the church, okay, because people who would not have come to church regardless, this is the, the pandemic, in, in, in many ways, people, a lot of people were legitimately fearful of the virus, okay, and I'm not getting into anything political here, but what you found is the people that were kind of on the edges, that weren't really connected to church, just maybe ever so often, this was the perfect excuse not to come. Okay? But the Bible is very clear that we should never forsake the assembling together of ourselves. We should come together as a church. And what you'll find is that healthy churches thrive during the pandemic, even when they weren't meeting together. But it's important. It is important for us. The Christian life is one that's meant to be lived in community with one another. Loving one another. Taking care of one another. That's another way that you can be intimate with the upright. He says... The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffers, yet he gives grace to the afflicted. He gives grace. We all are afflicted at one time or another. And it says here, he gives grace to those who are afflicted. He says, the wise will inherit honor. And he says, but fools display dishonor. All right. This is an amazing chapter, an amazing book. I hope that you stay with us through the duration of this. Um, If my math is right, it'll take us about, I don't know, five or six weeks to get through with Proverbs. And then uh, the morning watch is done, okay, at least for now. And uh, it doesn't mean that it won't come back. Um, I just need some time. I need some time to pull back and uh, work on myself. I need to do that and, and do some of my own just private, intensive Bible study on my own. And um, I promise you this, I'll seek the Lord. And if he wants us to continue this, we'll come back. Okay? I, I know that I know that for sure. So I love you all. Have a great night. Let's pray together and then we'll be go and then we'll go. Hi Diane. Hi Kim. Who else here? Yeah, and uh, I think that's it. All right, I love you all. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this night. Thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for who you are to us. Lord, strengthen us, undergird us with your strength and your wisdom. We, we, we need your wisdom tonight. We love you, and we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. See you in the morning. We'll be back together in about 11 hours to do Proverbs chapter 4. All right? I love you all. I appreciate you all, Wilma, so much. You all have been so faithful. We've been doing this for nearly two years. We've been doing this, which is crazy. Um, I'm so thankful for each of you and your faithfulness and um, sleep well and we will see you tomorrow.